Hey, you! Are you tired of traditional fantasy stories of heroism, bravery and self-sacrifice and good ultimately triumphing over evil? Are you sick of all those toxic white males presuming to rescue women from dangerous situations without even getting affirmative consent first? Do you long for a story that finally gives us a strong empowered female lead who rescues herself and doesn't need a man for anything? Then congratulations, because not only have you apparently skipped over basically every movie, TV show and video game in the last 10 years, but you're almost certainly the target audience for Damso, a Netflix fantasy movie starring everyone's favourite serial sobber, Millie Bobby Billie Jean King James Earl Jones Brown. <laughs> And I've got to admit, when I first saw the poster for this movie, featuring a bored looking brown holding a sword that she probably struggled to even lift in the publicity shot, sporting the proud tagline, This is not a fairy tale. <laughs> I actually assumed it was some piece of AI generated crap made by someone on Twitter for a laugh. A little bit of fun memeing on the trite and tediously predictable girl boss trope that's been crowbarred into almost every piece of media that we've seen for the past decades. But how wrong I was. This is real. This is an actual real movie that functioning adults worked on. Professional screenwriters came up with this script. A legit production company greenlit and worked on it. Netflix agreed to distribute it. Quality actors like Brown, Ray Winston, Angela Bassett, and Shur Sh Shagram Sh Shuri Sh Sh Shugri Agadashu Admiral Chainsmoker from Star Trek Beyond signed up to perform in it. And at long last, here I was at the end of this series of unfortunate events, a humble drinker, sitting down to, uh, experience it. And truly, what an experience it was. Like, you know Willow on Disney Plus? You know how it was a terrible idea that never should have got made? You know how Disney were so embarrassed by it that they ended up deleting it from their servers and memory holing it into oblivion? Well, that's basically Damsel for you. I don't think I've ever seen a movie so smugly proud of itself for doing something so completely predictable and unimaginative in my entire life. I don't think I've seen such a talented cast wasted so profoundly on a script that absolutely doesn't deserve them, and I don't think I've seen so many films hammer home their message quite as clumsily and obviously as this piece of dog shit. Are you lost boys? Every last one of us. But you're not all boys. So? Fuck. Well, actually, maybe that last one's debatable. Put simply, Damsel was 110 minutes of self inflicted cinematic misery that I endured so that I could spare you a similar fate. So abandon all hope, ye who enter here, because the drinker's about to lay out what passes for a story. So the movie picks up in generic medieval fantasy land that probably does have a name, but I couldn't be arsed trying to remember it. Anyway, the country's been terrorised by a nasty fire breathing dragon, so the king does what kings do leads a small force of men on horseback armed with melee weapons to take it out. Are you dumb or something? Seriously guys, do you actually understand how dragons work or what? Anyway, the mission goes about as well as you'd expect, and everyone gets killed except for the king who kneels before the dragon and begs for mercy. Hmm, I wonder if this might have repercussions later in the story. Flash forward a few hundred years and not only is human civilization still at the same exact level of technological development, but we also get to meet our main man. Sorry, main woman. Melody. Not Melody, mind you, because this is generic fantasy land and they're going for the classic approach of taking regular names and removing random letters to make entirely new ones. But Rinker, I hear you say. Get on with your plot summary so we can get this turd over with. No problem, inner monologue who keeps escaping into the real worlds. So Elodie is the daughter of a lord who presides over an impoverished town that seems to be located in the fucking North Pole by the looks of things. And instead of looking at diplomatic or economic solutions to their problems, she spends her days chopping firewood to help her people survive. Yeah, that's really gonna solve the problems of famine and bankruptcy. Nice one, Elodie. Anyway, things turn around abruptly when she's offered a marriage proposal from the queen of generic fantasy land to marry her son Henry. And in return, they'll get enough money and food to survive for the winter. Naturally, her parents think this is a good idea. Oh yeah, these are her parents, by the way. And just in case you were in any doubt that this is a modern fantasy film, you can always count on isolated medieval evil cultures in northern European climates to have the kind of metropolitan racial diversity that would make New York look like the Outer Hebrides. 
Elodie's not particularly keen on the idea though because she's a strong independent girl boss who wants to live a life of travel and adventure and doesn't want some mean stinky man holding her back. You know, I always like it when characters living in a feudal, quasi-medieval society have the worldview and aspirations of 21st century gender studies graduates from Southern California. Really helps you get immersed in the world. Anyway, before you know it, Elodie is off to get married and her sister goes along for the ride as well so that the rest of the plot can happen later. And everything seems to be going fine at first, Elodie and Henry get along pretty well and bond over the fact that they're both shallow modern archetypes trapped in a low-budget generic feminist fantasy movie that's almost certainly going to damage the careers of every single person involved. Meanwhile, strong diverse female character wants to meet up with other strong female characters so they can discuss their shared hatred of men and ways that they can overthrow the patriarchy together, but strong female character isn't interested and tells her to fuck off. Hmm, I wonder what she might be hiding. So the wedding ceremony goes ahead and then Elodie's taken up into the mountains for an additional secret ceremony far away from any witnesses. Hmm, seems totally legit to me. But then Henry throws her off a bridge in the first genuinely entertaining scene in the entire film. <laughs> See, it turns out that the dragon made a pact with toxic white male king from the intro after he murdered all of her baby dragons totally unprovoked, and every few decades the royal family has to sacrifice three of their daughters to honour the agreement. But instead, what they actually do is marry girls into the family, mix their blood in the wedding ceremony to fool the dragon into thinking they're from the royal bloodline, and sacrifice them instead. WHAT. THE. FUCK. So you're telling me that mixing blood through a tiny cut on the hand is enough to alter a person's entire profile and fool a centuries old dragon into believing that they're from a whole different bloodline? Or that nobody ever found it slightly unusual that young women married into the royal family all mysteriously disappear at regular intervals? Fuck off, film. Anyway, so Elodie's scheduled to be a happy meal for the dragon, but naturally she manages to get away even though the dragon sets her leg on fire. But that's okay because then some magical bullshit slugs show up and fix everything and the dragon gets so pissed off that it sets the entire sky on fire because yeah, sure, that's a thing you can do apparently. So then strong female character kidnaps Elodie's sister to sacrifice to the dragon instead. See, I told you she'd be relevant to the plot later. But then Elodie distracts the dragon and saves her life, and then fights and defeats it even when a squadron of trained knights in full battle armor couldn't do it because they weren't strong female characters. <laughs> But because the dragon itself is female, that means that everything it did up to this point is entirely morally justifiable, including roasting and eating dozens of innocent young women. Fuck off, film. So then Elodie and strong female dragon join forces to torch the castle and murder hundreds of innocent civilians together, and then they meet up with her sister and strong diverse female character and head home triumphant to take down the patriarchy together. And that's it. That's the plot for generic female empowerment story number 4271. Oh yes, that's shite. What a pointless, miserable waste of tens of millions of dollars this film was, not to mention 110 minutes of my extremely limited lifespan. Yet another ridiculous, self-important offering at the altar of THE MESSAGE. Trying to appeal to an audience of frustrated, middle-aged, borderline alcoholic female fantasy buffs that never actually existed in the first place. A film that acts like the last 20 years of entertainment never actually happened, and the concept of a strong, empowered female lead freeing herself from the shackles of the patriarchy, realising her own power and taking centre stage in a male-dominated genre isn't something that's already been done so many times that it's become as tired and played out as the very tropes that it laughably thinks it's subverting. Every single aspect of its message is hammered home with all the subtlety of a rainbow-coloured unicorn covered in neon lights, with its horn replaced by an 18-inch rubber dildo. None of the characters have anything even approaching real personalities. The women are all generically powerful, confident, and commanding, so much so that they're completely interchangeable. The men are either useless, weak, cowardly morons that are easily pushed around, or dumb, shallow blockheads who conveniently die as soon as it's convenient to the plots. You know, subverting one set of stale, restrictive tropes doesn't count for much if all you do is replace them with a new set of equally stale, restrictive tropes. I mean, apart from Brown, who gives it her all in yet another shitty production that doesn't deserve her, most of the cast seem to know the kind of shit tip that they're in, and 
how to bring that across with low effort, apathetic performances that feel like they were faxed in. I mean, if you believe for one second that Ray Winston did this movie for anything other than an easy paycheck, then bless your heart, you sweet summer childs. Ultimately, Damsel may be the perfect example of glorious self-delusion in the world of entertainment, a movie that feels like it arrived two decades late to the party, bursting with ideas that weren't particularly new or interesting even back then, and so desperate to hammer you over the head with its tired, played out message of female empowerment that it forgets to actually tell a story along the way. I wasted my time on this movie, and that's time that I'll never get back, so I suggest you don't repeat my mistake. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!